According to all known laws of aviation, a bear carrying a bird should not be able to fly. Most would agree, even if it was, it's highly uncharacteristic from the expected behaviors of those species, and it's not a far stretch to say that such behavior would be considered ethically unpermissible. Despite all this, in 1998, the company Rare, then Rareware, released a game not only depicting this allegedly depraved act, but featuring it as one of the core gameplay loops. And it was a hit. This so-called scientist's nightmare was considered the greatest game on the N64, the only platformer to surpass Super Mario 64. It spawned a whole series. Of course, the story doesn't end there. The realism consuming the games industry in the mid-2000s led to a major falling out of both the genre and aesthetic, with critics and gamers alike questioning why they ever liked such a ridiculous concept, let alone why they would have ever played a game where the guns aren't guns, but eggs. For a time, the true fans of Banjo-Kazooie, myself included, were mocked and bullied by the mainstream gamers. I was a defenseless kid, didn't have three science degrees, and to be frank, it wasn't the worst of what true gamers have been put through since then. I forgave and forgot. What's changed? Well, it's no secret that cartoony collectibles have come back in a major way, but what really got me thinking about this oft-forgotten classic was the rumors that they are going to be in the new Smash Brothers. And so quick we are to forgive, the bullies are back. This time, I'm not defenseless. I'm sick of lies and slander being spread about two of the most amazing animals I've ever known, and with science and reason, I'm going to set things straight. The likeliest argument you've ever heard against Banjo-Kazooie probably goes a little something like this. It doesn't make any sense that a Klein a little crow like Kazooie could carry a big ol' bear like Banjo. Now, I'll be the first to admit this seems a little far-fetched to somebody who doesn't know quite as much about Ornithopter 3, the study of birds and other feathered friends, but I was in fact able to look up the biggest and strongest birds and found out about the cassowary, a big clucker that weighs more than some of the mightiest bears. Unfortunately, it turns out they went extinct in the 1980s, over a decade and a half before Banjo and Kazooie came out. But in modern day, you can still find the two-legged ostrich, a bird almost as big if you think about it. And while I thought I had solved this so-called canine conundrum, when it hit me, Hostage can't fly. What the... Thankfully, we need to look no farther than the logo of North America, the Big Eagle, to learn that they can carry away a lot of big things, some of which are much bigger than a baby bear. A feathery flap of sufficient wingspan could easily produce enough lift and drag to carry a bear, and if anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you refer them to my dad's best friend Daryl Harper, who just happens to be the leading organothopatrist at the Bird University of Connecticut. He lives at 3590 South Graper Lane, Herald, Connecticut. Please visit his house. Thank you for your time. Even though there's irrefutable scientific evidence proving that a bird could carry a bear, as any modern gamer and scientist knows, possibility is not the same thing as plausibility, and I'm not going to just leave this out of my argument because it's convenient. Detractors could still easily claim that the bear and bird are natural enemies, and therefore they would never work together in this way. But in reality, some birds like to eat crocodiles' teeth to clean them, and since croc is a crocodile in the same genre as Banjo-Kazooie, it's pretty obvious that this is a clever reference to this real-world biological codependent relationship. I don't mean to brag, but there's also a type of beetle that lives in a fish's mouth to be its tongue, which explains how Kazooie can live in Banjo's backpack for such a long time. So I'm sure most haters and trolls don't even have the attention span to watch this far into a video about a game with such controversial imagery and subject matter that defined a generation, but nevertheless, with the way of the world the way it is these days, I'm sure even if a troll accepted the irrefutable arguments that a bear and bird could and would fly together, they would still try and argue that they shouldn't because it's not morally right. Now, I'm sure there are some exceptions, but in all my years of being a Banjo-Kazooie fan, I've noticed that people who say a bear and bird are quote-unquote living in sin are almost always exclusively the people who play games about real wars. Now, last time I checked, those aren't so good on the morals themselves. Projection is a psychological term, meaning what goes around comes around. These fake gamers feel guilty for playing greedy gun games that try to justify the fun in games of war and don't understand for the respect of your fellow man. 
What all this psychological mumbo-jumbo means is simply that when someone says Banjo-Kazooie could never happen, they might be trying to displace the righteous incredulity that a better person would understand should be questioning the farce of just war. So that's that. But I'd be remiss not to mention that still leaves us with an elephant in the room. Buzz buzz! Buzz buzz! Buzz buzz! buzz. If you're like me, this sickly sweet siren song signifies that on a hot and heavy summer night like tonight, it's time to come in off the porch or else get bitten by the bats or out. Bats are some of the largest insects I've ever seen, and we all hate those scratchy bites. Personal grudges aside, there is recent official direct sequel of Banjo-Kazooie, in the wake of their untimely deaths. Yuka Laylee makes a much more logical case, or so it seems. Yuka the gecko and Laylee the bat could be the same size in real life, and bats actually do have enough wings in them to carry little lizards. However, it's never explicitly stated what type of bat Laylee is. In fact, not much is known about bats at all, but what we do know includes that there are flying foxes. That's right, you heard me, and I don't mean the spaceship. Flying foxes are a type of bat, and they're the biggest mammals who know how to fly. Just one of these bat boys could be as big as 5 feet and as heavy as 50 pounds. Now, no one can argue that Yuka packs a wallet for just a little iguana. But just how small are we talking? The smallest type of chameleon is called a skink, and these little baby newts can only be as big as your fingernail. If you assume your fingernail is about 2 inches long, that means at least 30 yukas could fit on one Laylee. That's too small for her to even know that yuka is there! Ironically, yuka Laylee actually ended up being a so-called hall simulator, and not a true crown taker of Banjo and Kazooie. And it's plain to see this is because it's unrealistic for the reasons that Banjo-Kazooie gets falsely criticized for, and that's why it's not as good as Banjo-Kazooie. Don't judge Banjo-Kazooie by the flaws of its nasty sequel. You can go back and play the HD remastered, fully updated remakes on Rare Rewind for the Xbox, and I'm here for it. Now, I know there are still going to be haters and trolls out there. Sometimes I'm not even sure if I believe Banjo-Kazooie will be in Brothers. Although it seems like they're letting anyone in these days. Seriously? Regardless, I hope that you'll be able to use these arguments next time you come across a troll trying to crucify you for being a real gamer. It really makes me happy to use some of my science background to help other gamers, and I hope that this video has brought just a little bit of truth back to gaming, and perhaps brought you just a little closer to maintaining the integrity of games and its games journalism. Semper Games.